Welcome back. You've heard about the challenges, what's being done. Now we want to get to some solutions. Sheriff, how do you get people to care, to participate in all of the programs that are out there? Well, so uh, I think it's multifaceted. So we have to have programs given at the right time and we have to have the enforcement aspect when programs don't work. Um, I would encourage anybody to get involved with Boys and Girls Club, anything like that, to be able to provide that mentoring relationship Tiger talked about. Um, because it, in, in my perfect world, programs would stop crime before they occur. Um, we're not living in that perfect world, you know, and unfortunately we have to take enforcement action sometime. But just be involved in your community. Be involved, uh, you know, this is all of our community. We're all living here. We all have a vested interest to make it a safe community for all of us. So take a little bit of time. Be involved in some of those things. Um, if it does come to where a crime is in your neighborhood, chat with us. You know, sometimes people are hesitant about uh, speaking with the police. They're worried about, you know, they don't trust us or they're even worried about retaliation on them. Um, so, you know, my deputies have been out, you know, walking around some of the neighborhoods where we patrol uh, primarily, just getting to know the neighbors. And so they feel a little bit more comfortable with us um, if they ever do need to call us. But I think my number one thing would be is just get out there, get involved, because all of us can make a difference in the end. Because I feel perhaps one of your number one hardest things that you're trying to combat, people not wanting to be witnesses. Yep, and there's, Jennifer, there's a lot of reasons for that, um, and there's a lot of justification that people have for that. Uh, but we cannot solve crimes unless we have information about those crimes. And so, you know, Crime Stoppers is a good is a good resource um, to to be anonymous if you want to report something. Um, we don't care how you report it, but we need that information to uh, to help investigate the case. Sheldon, it's all fine and good to have those programs at the Champaign School District, but if you can't reach those kids. I mean, how do you get them to participate if they don't want to listen? Yeah. I'm going to say one thing, too. Uh, yeah. If we rewrite the narrative on the media, because it's not always a, a negative thing um, that's going on with young black men, if we, we start pulling out more stories, um, we start... We start pulling out, pulling out more stories about the good things that's going on with, because we got successes. We got Goal Getters got some successes. Operation Hope got some successes. These men got success. We all got some successes. So if we're talking about victory. There are some victory uh, stories. And so if we kind of push that and rewrite that narrative, I think that would also help my young men, because they seeing, hey, there's some good things going on in Champagne. We ain't everybody in all negative because negative feed negative. They get the negative energy. If I come in there with negative energy with them young young, young men, they gonna give me negative energy. So I I come in there with some positive energy. I get guys that got positive energy. So you know that positive energy with the young men and and some of the, and the young females as well. Because sometimes we forget about the females. Because you know the females they struggling as well too. So um, with Operation Hope, we working with the females as well. So. Um, teaching them about positive things and just rewriting that narrative because they deal with enough negative. And also, I don't want to just have it be on the, we're not just talking about the black community. We have to be one community. Right. So the people watching who may not be part of that community, mm -hmm. what can specifically they do? They're, they're watching the stories, they see the crime on TV. What can anyone watching right now, how can they engage in trying to fix the problem? That's just to anyone. Yeah. So we, are, we have a collaboration effort with United Way um, in the city of Champaign. And we always have um, opportunities to have uh, you know, folks come to, from United Way to speak to our students. We show diversity through, through a lot of the, the programs that we, we have, um, whether it's financial literacy, or if it's something, you know, like for instance, Saturday, we took the, uh, some, some students to the game, the homecoming game. Some of those young men and young ladies never been to a University of Illinois uh, game before, and we got free tickets, so, you know. <laughs> and so we, we enjoy, and they enjoyed the homecoming, you know, and all of that stuff, and they were, they were like, you know, Mr. Turner, I've never been to a game before, so, uh, you know, just being able to provide for, uh, you know, opportunities like that would be great. I would, I would like to add I know, that. Regina's got a list. Yeah, a list. I've been waiting for somebody to ask me this question. <laughs> right, I do. I actually have three, actually. Um, so with when you're working with families, it's important to understand that when you have a situation where there's gun violence, there are going to be some unplanned expenses and things that happen. 
And families, I believe, need access to, and we need to establish, if possible, in the community, some flexible funds um, that can be attributed to every family, maybe a $1,000 minimum. Then that way you can address some of the immediate needs that need to be, um, to, to be addressed that are unplanned for. So uh, mental health counseling, um, maybe doctor's appointments, lost wages, those things are very real and they impact a family. A family becomes like literally frozen, polarized when this type of incident happens. And so you still got to maintain a household and sometimes you need that financial assistance to be able to do that. So donations to establishing a fund to be able to assist some of that immediate crisis um, intervention that, that takes place right at the beginning when that happens. Another thing I think that Champaign County is, is already primed for, we have talked about systems of care, we have talked about um, coordinated services, we've been doing that work for a good 10, 15 plus years here for us to actually get together as providers, as community members, to coordinate services for families. And what that means is, is that we're bringing families to the table, we're bringing the providers to the table, we're bringing natural supports to the table, and we're creating a plan to help address whatever the needs are for the families. And that's something that we have been working on and that we can continue to do. And then also just having um, peer supporters for parents who are navigating those systems systems of uh, juvenile justice, criminal ju you know, the criminal justice system, whatever is going on, uh, a parent can feel so isolated, alone, depressed, all of these things that are going on with them. So we need more advocacy type um, lived experience positions that people can, can get involved with. And so, there, uh, and it's developing a whole nother workforce because there's times when people want you to get involved in things, um, bringing your lived experience to the table, but they don't want to incentivize it or pay you to do that. I think these are paid positions because then you have people who are dedicated to the work of serving families. And so we need people who can support parents with lived experience. We need people who have navigated the criminal justice system to be there for families to say, okay, this is what you can expect in an investigation. This is why this is gonna happen and this is how you know things are gonna play out. Um, if it's you know law dealing with law enforcement, how do you interact with them? So I think that advocacy, peer support, flex funds, and care, care coordination or coordinated services are necessary. <laughs> sure someone was taking notes <laughs> right, writing all of that down James you have some ideas about how the entire champagne community can help well I'm gonna take what Regina said and I'm gonna take what Sheldon said because Sheldon spoke proactively getting getting involved taking these young men out exposing them to positive things that's proactive uh, the h3 model is what I'm pushing now is the harm you know hope harm hope and healing those three need those three components need to be involved take everything what regina said bring it together into a coalition where we working as a unit now and have a have a a, a strategic strike now we're gonna get somewhere you know because we got we got agencies working in silos and that's a problem we need to be accountable now see and then now we get together and then we now we got cross team uh, connections across team and we and we saying okay well what's wrong with this individual family because you see it's never one issue right. I help people all the time and I'm always finding places for them to live but it's never just one issue it may be drugs related it's trauma so I need help from other agencies so I reach out I go work with all these different agencies out here I'm working like five different agencies at the same time because I need that type of help but now it's time to bring it together yeah. under one head I want to end with the hope. We wanted to talk about that there is hope. Right. There is an end in sight. Do you feel like there is an end in sight to what is happening right now? Sure. I do because we are all working together. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have to have that law enforcement aspect, but we don't that law enforcement aspect is not the entire answer any more than all programs is the entire answer either tiger and i were talking about that before we started uh, groups like this and groups you know i'm in meetings all day long champaign county has shown me 
that there is hope and we're going to get through this because we're working together. You watching, you have gotten a different perspective perhaps than you had. You now have an idea of where you can get started if you want to do something. Instead of just sitting at home and typing on Facebook, you're so sick of what is happening, you just heard 10 minutes of how to change life. We have to do this together. So this is the first step. The people in this room want you to be involved as well. Don't just let them do the hard work. So please, go to WCIA.com. We have links to all of their groups. We have numbers. We can do this. The conversation also, I want this room with me all the time. I love the, the support and the energy we're getting here. So please also go to WCIA.com. The conversation will continue. We will be streaming live there. Thank you very much, thank all you. of you. We're going to do this again. Okay. And thank all of you for being here. And thank you for watching. This has been Victory Over Violence Town Hall from WCIA 3 News in partnership with Champaign County Community Coalition. Victory Over Violence is brought to you by Rector Construction, Land Inc., Tatman's Towing, Shields Auto Group, and Serve Pro.